Welcome to From First to Home. I'm your host, Scott Harris, a fan of both life and baseball. In each episode, we're going to round the bases together. We'll start in the batter's box, reviewing baseball history and the 1995 Seattle Mariners season. And then we'll proceed around the bases from first to home, covering the 2021 Mariners, and we'll throw in some life lessons. Come on into the stadium and take a seat wherever you'd like. Here in episode four, we're going to look at the breaks. Our superstar Ken Griffey Jr.'s wrist, the all-star break, and the break right smack dab in the middle of the calendar year. A mid-year break for all. 183 days down, 182 to go. The 1995 Mariners at mid-year all-star break now having two meanings with our superstar Ken Griffey Jr.'s broken wrist and the midseason all-star game break. On May 26, 1995, Griffey breaks his wrist. The Mariners suffer a devastating blow when Ken Griffey Jr., while making another in a long line of brilliant catches, breaks his wrist, crashing into the Kingdom Wall in right center field to snare a line drive hit by Baltimore's Kevin Bass. Griffey fractures his distal radius bone, requiring surgery in which a steel plate and seven screws are put in his wrist. We've got a short character now, manager Lou Pinella would say. That's why they call it a team. Griffey misses nearly three months returning to action August 15th with Alex Diaz and Rich Amaral platooning in center. The M's go 36 and 37 in his absence, and they drop 10 games to the Angels in the standings from two and a half back to 12 and a half back. Lee Pelicudis, director of baseball administration, would say, Looking back, it's easy to forget that Junior was out for most of the season. Technically, he missed exactly half. So you have to start talking about the role players that we had, like Rich Amaral, Alex Diaz, and Doug Strange, and the things those guys did throughout the season and down the stretch. Griffey would say, I didn't spend a whole lot of time watching games, knowing I couldn't do anything, just made it worse. Joey Cora, Jr. was one of the best players in the game, and he wasn't there for half a year. He said to me, Joey, you keep it close. When I come back, I'll take you to the promised land. Griffey also said, as a competitor, you always feel that way. I want Joey to say the same thing if he was in that same situation. At the All-Star break in July of 1995, the Mariners were dead last in the American League West division at 34 and 35 and five games out of first place. For a team that was rumored to be heading to Tampa, Florida, the front office remained aggressive, trading for starting pitcher Andy Bettis and signing reliever Norm Charlton and left fielder Vince Coleman in an attempt to compete. The Mariners were represented in the 1995 All-Star game by Edgar Martinez, who went 0 for 3. Randy Johnson pitched two innings, striking out three and walking one. Tino Martino's got a hit in his only at bat. And yes, Ken Griffey Jr. did make the team, but with his broken wrist, he was unable to play. An odd stat from the 95 All-Star game is the American League pitchers held National League batters to just three hits. Unfortunately, all three were home runs. The game resulted in the National League defeating the American League three to two. I heard at one point, I'm not sure if it's still the case, that there's only two days on the calendar year where one of the four major sports teams isn't playing a game. The day before and the day after the All-Star game. Okay, let's head into the batter's box and start rounding the bases together. Approaching the batter's box in this episode, sitting right in the middle of the calendar year, and in the middle of a long baseball season, let's take a quick look inward again. Have you been a first half of the year all-star? Performing daily at your very best? And if you were picked as the all-star parent, spouse, partner, employee, employer, are you ready to play amongst the very best? Of course you are. Now act like it. Going forward into the second half of the year, what should you stop doing? If you've listened to other episodes, you probably have already stopped something by now. 
And hopefully that's making you more productive and eliminating some of the things that are counterproductive or time sucking. Being more efficient is a goal. What should you stop doing? Next, what should you start doing? Maybe we should stop putting this off and start. What is it? Put a name on it. Put a date on it. Put some passion into it. No time for excuses right here. You owe it to yourself to be your best. So start there. Lastly, what should you keep doing? You enjoy it. You feel great energy when you do it. You know it's having a greater impact on your life right now more than anything else. And putting it into action is natural and easy. Keep doing those things. The key takeaway in one word is doing. What are we doing? Together, let's go down to first base. Doing first things first and starting anything new. What's the first step? Stop and think right now. What is the first thing I must do right now? One thing, not five, not 10, just one. Did you write it down? No? Well, hit pause right here and write it down before anything else. First things first. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> Hopefully you hit pause and wrote that down. As we stand here on first base thinking about first and starting something new, the 2021 Mariner season had a first with a grand reopening to the season held on July 2nd, the day right in the middle of the year, mind you. Opening the stadium to full capacity for the first time since 2019, lifting the coronavirus mandatory limitations. Well, that's enough about that topic. Additional first for the 2021 Mariners at the midseason mark, we had a major league baseball debut by the 20th thousandth Major League Baseball player in history when Mariners backup catcher Jose Godoy made his big league debut on May 22nd. Also seeing their Major League debuts on May 13th, the same night, Jared Kelnick, our number one overall prospect, and Logan Gilbert, our number one pitching prospect, both debuted on the same night. Kelnick started out great, going three for four in his second game with two doubles and a home run, three ribbies. Wow. Unfortunately, he would only get four hits in the next 10 games and would go hitless in the following 10 games. He went 0 for 39 in those last 10 games before him being set back down to Tacoma. In his first 23 games, he finished 8 for 83 with two doubles, two home runs, three RBIs, and a batting average of 0.96. Ouch. On the upside... He's hitting 310 in Tacoma and was named one of three Mariners to play in the 2021 Futures game the day before the All-Star game this year. The other two Mariners are Julio Rodriguez, baseball's overall number five prospect, right behind Kelnick at number four, and starting pitcher Emerson Hancock. Good luck, boys. With Logan Gilbert's first start on the same night as Kelnick's, he has done a nice job of staying in the rotation, posting a 2-2 two two record in his nine competitive starts. Let's sprint over to second base and catch up with the 2021 Mariners. As we near the 2021 All-Star Game, no Mariners been named yet. I have a feeling Kikuchi's probably going to be on. The team sits in third place with a 44-40 and record and still competing nightly. Proof of that is they have a 10-1 and record in extra inning games. Pretty cool, pretty exciting. Our vets in Mitch Haniger and Kyle Seeger have been leading the offense with 18 and 15 home runs respectively. C.J. Crawford's really been playing well lately at a steady shortstop and raising his batting average to 289. Got a feeling he might get added to that all-star team also. Jake Fraley has been the definition of gritty, scrappy player, both offensively and defensively. And Marco Gonzalez is just coming off the injured resist and getting back into the rotation. The emerging ace is Yusei Kikuchi. His numbers are a 318 average, 93 strikeouts, and 6-3. In his 15 starts, got a feeling he's going to get named to the All-Star team. I'm not sure if the Mariners will make any midseason trades, but with once again a high number of personnel moves, I hope the boys can keep up the feisty chemistry and keep competing with Houston in first place at 51 and 33, and Oakland in second place with a 49 and 36 record. 
Very competitive division once again this year. Now it's time for baseball funnies and baseball quotes. A man leaves his home, makes three left-hand turns, and on his way back home, when he notices two men in mask waiting for him there. Who are they? That's the catcher and the umpire. Why did the baseball player shut down the website? He wasn't getting any hits. Ouch, Kelnick can probably relate to that. How about a baseball quote? Models are like baseball players. We make a lot of money quickly, but all of a sudden we're 30 years old, we don't have a college education, we're qualified for nothing, and we're used to a very nice lifestyle. The best thing is to marry a movie star. Supermodel Cindy Crawford. Off to third base we go. Third base, as I've mentioned before, is the toughest hit in baseball. So let's cover or uncover the most difficult mid-season or mid-year challenges for ourselves. As with all teams, whether they're inside our own four walls or on a diamond, we must ask, how can we keep improving? Let's look back to first base. Did you write down the one thing? Are you doing first things first? And what's the one thing that you will start? Keeping first things first. Got to do it first. You got to start somewhere. Okay, last chance. This is most difficult for you. Write it down. Look at it. Keep it in front of you. The difficulty is in starting maybe the hardest part. Have you started something that you thought you would be difficult or hard to do? Hard to overcome? Only to find out you're more than capable of accomplishing what you set your mind to? Pretty powerful. Put it in front of you. Or is it the most challenging to stop doing something that you know you should stop doing to be more productive and to be more efficient with the things that you really want in your life? Like the news. Does it have you feeling better or fearful and doubtful about moving forward confidently? Know this. You are far more than good enough to start something that scares you. To take the chance of failing, which is also a learning lesson. So go for it, damn it got this. You're a champion. Let's move down the third baseline and bring it home. As we're in the middle of the year talking about the breaks, Griffey Juniors and the mid-season summer classic all-star game, how about taking your own break? Again, 183 days down and 182 to go. Break a bad habit. Take a break from the news. Take a break from negative friends or family members. Take a break from saying stupid stuff out loud. Take a break from criticizing and judging others. Or maybe a break from inner anger or hate. Consider taking a break under, say, a tree in the shade and solace in that. Personally, I had to go spend three days on an island hiking and camping with my nephew Jeremy to enjoy the mid-year break and to keep me literally grounded, at the same time creating new stories and memories for a lifetime. Turning down the stadium lights on this episode, we've successfully rounded the bases together from home to home and recognizing the work starts first and then proceeding through one base or step at a time to completion. The goal is improvement, better and more efficient, like the Mariners. We may not have had a personal all-star first half, but we can have an all-star second half. You want to have an all-star second half of the year? I believe it can be true. Put it down on paper. Put it in front of you. Focus on it. Work on it. Eliminate those distractions. It's tough to act like an all-star when we don't feel that we should even be on the team. You're far better than that. Now go act like it. Go be great. This concludes Episode 4. Thanks again for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe to your favorite podcast platforms. Send me your favorite life for baseball stories. Can't wait to hear them. Or send me your thoughts on this podcast. How can I make it better? Share this recording with someone that loves both life and baseball. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. It's been great getting back into the studio slash closet and talking to myself. From first to home, life lessons and baseball stories. I'll see you next time.